Welcome to this product demonstration on Extender, a cost-effective way to configure, customize and extend Sage 300. My name's Anne from Orchid Systems. In this video, I'm going to run through what you can do with configuration using Extender for Sage 300. By configuration, I mean it is point-and-click selection of options, no coding, no Python. You can configure alerts via email or creating a note. You can configure logging, when and by whom records or fields are inserted or changed. You can also configure workflow to augment your business processes and provide more visibility and accountability to your business processes. And you can configure the ability to call external processes normally needed for systems integration. You can also customize using Sage 300 and Extender, and this is using coding or Python. You can customize the business logic, workflows, screens. You can create new screens and new tables and integrate directly to other systems. But this is covered off in another video. Please go to our website to view that video. And Extender does work very well with ORCID modules. For time-based alerts or workflows, you can use Process Scheduler to schedule an Extender script. For sharing information across systems and for rich context-sensitive notes, you can use Extender with ORCID notes. And you can use Extender to generate documents and file them away in the appropriate place to be displayed by Document Management Link. Please go to our website for other videos on using Extender with ORCID's modules. By configuration, you can notify somebody that a record or a field has changed, either by creating an Information Manager note and maintaining that Information Manager note, or by sending an email. And in this case, the customer 1105's credit limit was changed from 19,000 to 15,000 on the 8th of October. And we can see the email and the information manager note that was created at that time. If we go ahead and change the credit limit to 9,000, we can see the emails sent. And when we refresh the note, we see the note has been refreshed too. And now the credit limit is sitting at 9,000 and the last update done by Anne. And these notifications, either by sending an email or maintaining a note, can be done on any field on any Sage 300 record or view, like customers or vendors or items, or any third-party module that's been created in the SDK like ORCID's RMA. The second type of configuration you can do for any Sage 300 view or view field is to log the changes that are happening. So if I use the hotkey to call up the log, we can see in the last calendar month and change the credit limit from 15,000 to 9,000. And if we change the date range, we can see all the times the credit limit was changed for this customer. Date and time of the change, who did the change, and what it was changed from and to. So we've seen how we could configure alerts, notes, and emails, and logging for Sage 300 core views. And the example we saw was the AR customer. And similar configurations can be done for all of the Sage 300 core modules, like accounts receivable, accounts payable, general ledger, order entry, purchase orders, etc. But you can also do the same for modules created using the Sage 300 SDK. And one example of this is ORCID's RMA. For RMAs, we have configured a note and an email to be created each time an RMA is inserted. And we can see for the customer, Mr. Ronald Black, we already have two RMAs with the codes 17 and 18, which was created earlier. But when we go ahead and create a new RMA, and indicate which of the items are being returned or repaired, 
when we add the RMA, the email is sent and a new note is created with the RMA details. And the business case for creating a new note each time an RMA is created is not necessarily to show this note when you're entering the RMA, but more around the accounts receivable process when you perhaps are doing an inquiry into that customer. And at that point, it is worth noticing how many RMAs have been issued and when, perhaps when you're checking the credit status or following up on outstanding invoices. And we've also configured logging around the complete flag. So when the RMA is set to complete, that is logged in the audit trail. And calling up the log, we see that the RMA was completed by Anne. These configured events are set up in the event type screen and we've seen examples of log a change for the credit limit and the RMA complete flag, send an email when the RMA was created or when the credit limit was changed and create an information manager note. And we saw the example of the customer credit limit changing and the RMA being inserted. The fourth event type you can have is run a program. So when an event happens, this is the program that we're going to call. And you attach your events to the appropriate views in the view events and scripts. And in our case of run a program, we're saying that if any of the fields, vendor ID, vendor name, the address, and the email and the contact name changes, then call our integration piece. And you can attach your events to any of the fields on the view that you're working on, in this case, the AP vendor, and also to the delete, insert, update, or update and insert if you don't want to distinguish between the two. We have just seen an example of alerting and logging attached to a core Sage 300 view, the AR customer view, and to a third party view, the RMA view. And we also saw how you could configure your custom program being called around the AP vendor. You can also configure workflows. Workflows may be simple notifications and just recording an acknowledgement that something has happened. For example, you might have a workflow that starts when a general ledger account is created and somebody just needs to accept or acknowledge that they have read the notification and that's what your workflow consists of. Or your workflows may be multi-level with multiple people involved and with multiple configured steps at every stage in the workflow. So you may keep track of the first approver and the second approver for a payment batch. Workflows and notifications can be configured around master files when the record is created first time or it is amended. And this could be customers, vendors, general ledger accounts, or any third party master file that is created in the SDK. And you can also configure workflows around transactions like sales orders, purchase orders, inventory control adjustments, return material authorizations, etc. And you can configure workflow around batches like AP invoice batches, AP payment batches, AR invoice batches, AR receipt batches, general ledger journal batches, and so on. And workflows can be automatically or manually started. Automatically, so whenever a batch is entered or whenever a batch is set ready to post, then start the workflow or it could be manually started. For example, when you're reviewing a customer's record and you think they look like overdue or out of terms, then you might manually start a workflow to request the salesperson to put that customer on hold. Logging into a company with workflow configured, when I run the workflow console, I see all the workflow instances that are waiting for me. I see the RMA that is waiting for approval and the EFT batch, payment batch number one, that is waiting for approval. 
From the console for any one workflow instance, I can drill down into the underlying associated records. And in this case, it's been configured to go to the AR customer activity, the AR customer or the RMA for this particular RMA. I can also see the history, what steps have happened so far in this workflow approval. And there's only been one when the RMA was first entered and the workflow was triggered. I can see any values that the workflow has. In this case, I can see all the information so far uh, gathered by the workflow. And workflow permissions permitting, I can reassign this workflow to somebody else or I could delete this workflow. But I also see the next steps for this particular workflow instance, which in the case of my RMA is approve or reject. So before approving or rejecting, I might want to drill down to the underlying document. I might want to drill into the customer activity, have a look at the record and what is happening. And based on that, I could go ahead and approve or reject the RMA. I can also select this option to see all the workflow instances that are assigned to both me or to me via a group that I belong to. So because Anne is in the sales manager group and the AR approver group, I now see all the workflow instances for Anne or the AR approver group or the sales manager group. And I now see some orders waiting for approval and some customers that are on hold and waiting for approval to take them off hold. Drilling down into this order that's waiting for approval to be taken off hold, I see an icon on the order screen itself, which shows me that there's a workflow active for this particular record. And because it's a group of people, it's assigned to a group rather than an individual to approve. And because I'm a member of that group, I could progress and approve or reject from here. Or I could do that from the console. If I wanted to approve this particular order, I could click on the approve or if I wanted to reject, I could click on the reject and the steps are configurable. So it's in the configured template that we have an approval and a reject step as the next steps at this stage in the workflow. But if I go ahead and approve, the workflow prompts me for a comment and clicking OK takes the order off hold and removes this particular order from the workflow console as it is no longer active. On the workflow console, I can also use the colors or categories to filter what I see. So if I want to remove all the workflow instances which haven't been assigned a category or a color and the purchases and accounts, because I only want to see my urgent sales and returns, you can see how my workflow console has been filtered. I'm now going to demonstrate a business process where a master file record being created needs to be approved before it can be used. In this case, I'm going to work with general ledger accounts. When I create the general ledger account, the workflow is automatically started. And I get a message that the account has been made inactive until it has been approved. And you can see that on the GL record. And a similar process can be done for all master file records. Another workflow I'm going to start is for customer credit limit approvals. In the instance where if I enter a new credit limit, it needs to be approved before it can be accepted. So if I request a credit limit change to $40,000, I get the message that the credit limit workflow has started. And when I close this message box, you can see the credit limit went back to 18,500 where it was started and the person who's responsible for approving this credit limit would have received an email. Logging in as Steve, on his workflow console, he sees all the workflows which are assigned to him or assigned to a group that he is a member. And if he wants to concentrate only on the urgent and the accounting workflow instances, he can filter based on the categories or the colors. And he can see the customer credit limit approval that um, Anne submitted, as well as the GL account that Anne submitted. 
as well as all the other GL account or urgent workflows that he's filtered around. Looking at this GL account activate, from here Steve can drill down into the GL account if he wants to check the account group and the balance etc. and can go ahead and approve or reject. Depending on the steps configured for the workflow, the approval would send messages back to the starter and you can optionally record a comment for the workflow if you want as well. and the underlying GL account would be made active. Once approved, depending on your configuration, it will either disappear from the workflow console or it will stay on the workflow console as an approved workflow instance. With the customer credit limit approval, I could look at the history of that particular workflow. So it was started by Anne and then it's now waiting on Steve to do the next level of approval. I could see the values, what the original credit limit was, 18,500, what the new credit limit is, 40,000. And with the correct approval, I could reassign or delete this workflow instance or go ahead and approve. So when Steve approves this credit limit, he is prompted if he wants to override the credit limit and to give a comment. And this credit limit is now approved. So back on the AR customer, we would see the credit limit of 40,000. And in the workflow summary, we would see a single line for the workflow instance that it is now approved. And the detail would show us the individual steps, who did what when, and any values that may have been entered at that time. Back on the workflow console, logged in as Steve, by user, you can choose whether to auto-refresh the console and it will refresh every minute or you could have it to refresh only when you click the refresh button. This EFT option workflow instance, from the history we can see that this change was done by Steve and it's currently waiting for approval. And the workflow instance was started because Steve updated the EFT options and changed the flag unposted set to yes for AP patches. And this is an example of a workflow which is more of a notification. And by acknowledging this, the workflow is complete. So there's no accept or reject. It's just recording the acknowledgement that the change has happened. So rather than just sending an email, which you're not sure if the person received, here it'll sit on their console until they acknowledge. And then you have a record of that person acknowledging that that update happened. The next workflow I'm going to demonstrate is those for transactions like order entry or purchase orders. In this case, we have a workflow which will get started automatically if a sales order is created for a customer in the retail group. When I go ahead and create a sales order for Mr. Stephen Kershaw, who is in the retail group, automatically the sales order goes on hold and the workflow instance has been started. Logged in now as Anne, I can see the retail sales order that Steve has entered. When I drill down, I can see the details of that particular sales order. And perhaps it's not within my remit to actually approve this sales order. So I need to reassign it and I can reassign to a group or to a user and I'm going to reassign it to Natalie. And at the same time, I'm going to make this batch number 87, this AP invoice batch number 87, ready to post because I want Natalie to approve this and post this particular batch. When I make the batch ready to post, I get a message saying that the batch status has been set back to entered and the workflow has been submitted. If I make it ready to post a second time, I will get a message saying that the workflow instance for this batch is already active and waiting for somebody in the finance manager group to approve. 
logged in as Natalie now on my workflow console and when viewing only those workflow instances assigned to me, I see the order that has been assigned to me to approve. And if I look at the history, I can see that the order was started by Steve and then Anne reassigned it to me. And if I look at my console for all the workflow instances both assigned to me or to me because of a group I'm in, I see the AP invoice batch that Anne had submitted for me to approve. And I can either accept and post this or reject this and send a message back to Anne to tell her to make some changes before it can be posted. And by drilling down, I can open up that batch and see the entries. But once I'm happy, I could go accept and post. And that will send an email back to Anne saying that the batch has been accepted and posted and will post the batch. And if Natalie is an administrator type user with the ability to view all workflow instances, then by clicking on this button, we can see everything that's in progress and waiting for people to do. And the final type of workflow I'm going to demonstrate is the ability to manually start a workflow. In this case, the business case is when you're reviewing the customer inquiry and viewing the credit status or the aging, you might choose to put a customer on hold. So the workflow can be configured to start the workflow manually from an icon on the screen. And I can say, let's start the workflow instance. And this workflow has been configured to prompt for a reason why you want to put it on hold. And the workflow instance will be started. Logged in as Anne, I can see that the customer 1580 has been put on hold and I can drill down from here to the customer activity and I see the group icon on the AR customer activity indicating that the workflow is in progress and in fact assigned to a group that I am in because it is three group icon. And having reviewed the credit status, I might approve or reject to take this off hold. And when I approve, I notice that the workflow does not complete, but it's now got a second approve step of taking the customer off hold. So this workflow requires two levels of approval to take the customer off hold, and it's both levels need to come from the sales manager group. So still logged in as Anne, if I take the customer off hold, I get a message saying that a second approver is required, different from the first approver, Anne. So although it's the sales manager group that needs to do both levels of approval, it can't be the same person. So in order to take this customer off hold, I need to log on as somebody other than Anne in the sales manager group and take the customer off hold. We have seen five different workflows being demonstrated. The first for a master file record being inserted, the GL account. The second workflow was for a master file being amended, the AR customer credit limit. The third workflow was for a transaction where the OE sales order was in the retail group and a workflow was started to take the sales order off hold. The fourth was an AP invoice batch being made ready to post and the approval process posted the batch. All of these were automatic workflows, started automatically when the underlying record was inserted or changed. The fifth workflow was a manual workflow started from the AR customer inquiry. This workflow also demonstrated a two-step process for taking the customer off hold. The approvers for the first step and the second step both belong to the same group but the workflow validated that the first and second approvers were not the same person. And all of these workflows and alerting and logging was done through configuration. No coding required. So using configuration, you can manage exceptions and alerts. You can track the progress of approvals and you can increase the audibility on your business processes. Workflow also promotes business process visibility and transparency to all the relevant users and it facilitates collaboration without relying on word of mouth. 
In order to access the Workflow Console and the icons on the Workflow screen, you need to have ORCID users. When you consider the SAGE 300 architecture, in the centre you have the database, the SAGE 300 company database. Surrounding that you have the business logic or views, which encapsulate the business processes and business rules. These views are both the SAGE 300 core views and the third-party developers views that have been developed in the SAGE 300 SDK, or Software Development Kit. In the three segments surrounding the views, you have the ways that the business logic can be accessed. Firstly, by using the desktop or classic screens. These are the Sage 300 Visual Basic screens for all their modules, like General Ledger, Accounts Receivable, Accounts Payable, Inventory Control, etc., plus the third-party developers whose modules have been created in the Sage 300 SDK, like EFT Processing and RMA Processing. Secondly, you have the utilities provided by Sage and third-party developers to access the business logic using the SDK the global import-export routines, the VBA macros, the APIs and web services. And finally, more recently, you now have the web screens, both the Sage 300 web screens and those third parties who have started releasing their web screens. What Extender allows you to do is, firstly, by configuration, have alerting and logging, workflow and the ability to create events to trigger the calling of externally developed programs sitting as a layer on top of the views. So it sits on top of both the Sage 300 core views and the third-party views developed in the SDK. Secondly, by development, you can write your own custom processes, screens and applications to interact with the existing business logic. You can tailor the existing VB screens and we're working on tailoring the web screens. So this is both the Sage 300 core VB screens as well as the third-party VB screens. And you can tailor and extend the existing business logic. For example, add additional validations or additional security and additional functionality sitting on top of the existing business logic. And finally, you can create your own custom views, the tables and associated business logic, in such a way that the rest of the tools and utilities for Sage 300 see your custom views in the same way as a core view. For example, the reporting tools, the dump and load, the upgrade utilities, and so on. The benefits of using Extender and Python to do your customization is Python is an open source language which is widely used with thousands of well-tested libraries. The customizations you do are scripted and stored in the Sage 300 company database. This gives you flexibility in as much as the customizations can be deployed company by company and can be amended on site if you want. It's cost effective because the customizations support the standard Sage 300 tools like Upgrade, Dump and Load and the reporting tools. It gives you transparency as the source code is visible and it facilitates site management. There's no need to compile the customizations version by version or product update by product update. The source code is backed up when you back up the company database and it's self-documenting on site. Thank you for your time in watching this Extender Configurator video. For other Extender videos and other ORCID modules, please go to our website for more information.